another song. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found. I don't deserve it. Jatin, please have your seat. God bless you. Welcome to church this morning. This is Harvest Science International Christian Center. This is our Bagada campus. Praise the Lord. This is our epic service for the classic series. Praise the Lord. Can we appreciate Jesus? He's the first of his kind. I'm sure you're going to have a very nice time. Praise the Lord. But usually in Harvest Church, we have four services on the Sunday. This is the first service. But the classic service is only at the first service. And because of the first, we'd like to have your feedbacks. We'd like, to, we'd like to let you, I mean, please let us know how you feel about the service afterwards. Praise the Lord. The second service will be by 8.45, but the third by 10.30, and the fourth service by 12 noon. Praise the Lord. We also have our midweek service on Tuesday, wonderful time in the Lord. We have our Hefter series. I think we are going to part four of it this coming uh, Tuesday, by the grace of God. And then we have the fifth. Can we put our hands together for Jesus as well? For those of us who are young at heart and for those who are really very young, praise the Lord, the fifth is where you belong. And that's 5.30 every Saturday. Praise the Lord. We also have people who are watching us online from different parts of the globe. Can we appreciate them this morning? We can do better than that. Praise the Lord. They're joining us from different parts. 
off the globe, praise the living Jesus. We're very, very heavy on social media, and we'd like you to please follow Pastor Bolaji. The social media handles are on display. We'd like to have your feedback. If there are things you want us to do better, praise the Lord at feedback at harvestersng.org. And also, if you have testimonies of what God is doing in your life, we'd like to get to hear from you as well. Praise the Lord. That's a testimony at harvestersng.org as well. We'd like to have your testimonies. They are wonderful for us. It's going to be a wonderful service, and I believe that there's somebody here that God is here to do something unique in your life today. Praise the Lord. Today is the 9th of June, and if you know that a woman carries pregnancy for nine months and it delivers. Proverbs 23 and verse 18 says, Surely there is an end, and your expectations will not be cut off. And I believe that whatever expectations are in your heart today, the word of God will bring them to pass this week in the name of Jesus Christ. Once more, can we appreciate Jesus? Let me welcome your neighbor to the right and your neighbor to the left. You're welcome to a wonderful Sunday service. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, can you jump on your feet? Let's give God some praise. Is the Lord worthy? Come on, put your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. He's worthy of praise.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we just lift up our voices and begin to appreciate God this morning? Beloved, if you had a hundred billion, you can buy a life. Can you thank God for your life? You're standing here this morning. You are not holding crutches. You are not using breathing aids. Oxygen has been available and free to you. God needs to hear you say thank you this morning. Can you thank him very specially this morning? I appreciate him for where you are and where he's taking you to. God is faithful. God has been wonderful to you. He's been wonderful to your family. He's been wonderful in your career. Take time out to just say, Father, I thank you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, how many of us in our prayer changes things? This morning we are praying for the fulfillment of every marital plan this year for every single and waiting couple in this assembly. Isaiah 34, 16 says, Seek out of the book of the law and read. He said, None of them will lack their mate. When God says something, he means it. He says none, which means nobody will remain single except they want to. Can we please lift up our voices this morning and begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for every member of this assembly, believe in you, Lord, for marital settlement this year. Make it happen for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Make it happen for them in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare them. Open your mouth and pray this morning, beloved. Marital bliss, marital settlement in this great assembly this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For every single believing God to get married this year, Father, make a way. Lord, make a way in the name of Jesus Christ. As we pray, I believe that God is speaking even to the brothers here. Maybe you have been delaying a proposal. You've been saying, when am I going to say it? Maybe it's just the right time to walk up to that sister and tell her, this is how I feel about you. You are sure to get a yes. Sometimes when we pray, God is speaking to us at the same time. Father, we want to say thank you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 33 from verse 10 and 11. The 11 parts, the 10 parts says, In this place where you have said that there is no beast, there is no animal, God said, I will cause the return of the captivity of the former. And in verse 11, he says that in this same place, there will be voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of rejoicing, the void of the bride, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of those that will say, praise the Lord. Can we begin to say, in this assembly this year, the singles will praise the Lord. In the name of, can we open our mouth and begin to declare that in this great assembly, in Harvesters International, That will be the voice of rejoicing and the voice of gladness this year in the name of Jesus Christ. The voice of them that I will praise the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you, Lord. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Second Peter 1 19 said there's a surer word of prophecy. I'd like us to pray in this in this for this particular service. There will be a word, a definite word of prophecy for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we open our mouth and begin to ask the Lord? A sure word of prophecy in the mighty name of There will be a prophetic release of the word in this service this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It will bring it in alignment. The word of God will come in alignment with every situation in your life this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you open your mouth and begin to declare that? Declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we'll give you all the glory, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'd like us to also open our mouth this morning and pray that our eyes are open to see opportunities to strengthen and maintain all our business relationships. Can we open our mouth and begin to decree that? The Lord will open my eyes and show me opportunities, places to invest, relationships to get into, people to speak with, places to go to. That you don't just walk, you are led by the Spirit of God. 
everything that you do concerning your business in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis 21 from 18 to 19. Hagar and Ishmael will have perished in the desert. They were looking for water. He took an angel of God to tell them, this is where there is water. And that's how they go. Say, God will have to open your eyes. Tell the Lord to open your eyes. And he will do. Father, we'll give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're also praying for all businesses that they are breaking forth and they are overcoming limitations. Despite every of this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says that the Lord your God that teaches you to prosper. Can we open our mouth and begin to declare all the businesses in this assembly, including yours, this year, they will break forth in the name of Jesus Christ. They will overcome every form of limitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and declare, beloved. Open your mouth and declare it. Father, we give you praise. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Find this morning, I'd like you to declare that the Lord will open your eyes to the understanding of the scriptures. Lord, open my eyes to the understanding of the scriptures. In the name of Jesus Christ, declare that the Lord will open your eyes to the understanding of scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, open my eyes to the understanding of scriptures this morning as I come. Lord, will give you praise. Begin to thank him, beloved. Begin to appreciate him once more. Let him enlighten your understanding in the spirit. Beloved, we know that the spiritual controls the physical. And it's important we understand that relationship. Lord, this morning, open my eyes of understanding to the scriptures. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we shout aloud, hallelujah? Praise the living Jesus. I'm sure you have your Bibles with you this morning. I'd like us to quickly please open to Psalm 121. We're going to be reading responsively. I'll take the first verse, you take the second verse. I'll take the third, we take the fourth, and we go on like that until we get to the end of it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from when comes my help. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. You may please have your seats. Beloved Joseph Griffin was born in 1819, was born into a British royal family, and he went to school in Trinity College and got a law degree, and he decided he was going to settle down early in life. So he got engaged to a lady called the Rees, and a day before the wedding, the lady drowned. He felt so devastated. And he entered into an oath of poverty and, this, and sold all his earthly possessions and belongings. And he said he was only going to cater for those who were financially handicapped. And he became so broke that when his mother fell sick, he couldn't even travel there. And during those period, he began to write. And he said, me and the Lord wrote this together. That is how the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, came to be. God bless you this morning. Shall we rise on our feet as we take the song? What a friend we have in Jesus.
Hi everyone, welcome to Avestis TV. My name is Oyinda Mola. Today we're about to bring you happenings in our church life. Come with me. We do apologize for the break in transmission. It was due to, you know why. Well, are you a lover of hymns, psalms, and not so fast paced music? Then this news will excite you. In the month of June, Avestis International Christian Center presents the classical service. In the 7 a.m. service only, we're going to sing hymns, read psalms, sing, you know, all that very oldie, goodie kind of music. And this is the service you should come for. And do not come alone. Come with your friends, come with your family and everyone around you. I hope to see you there. God bless. It's a great privilege having to come to Harvesters International Christian Center where has changed our life tremendously well. And right now, today is our baby dedication. I lay hands on you, Modis, Modis Siri, and I dedicate you unto God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, that the blessing of God be continued upon you. And it was a successful one. My name is um, Ayurvind Arikawi, um, the father of Ayola. It's been a wonderful experience, it's been a part of Harvester family. Harvester International Christian Center is a family church. I appreciate the fact that they really, you know, encourage families and all that, marriage um, dedications, baby dedications and all that. Today is our Thanksgiving, I want to give all the praise to God. And I want to thank God I'm part of this church. Thank you everyone. I want to thank my wife, since we got married, life has not been the same. I just can't get better than this. 
For those out there, they should just go and get married. Please, marriage is sweet. Hallelujah. An excited man there. Amen. The Lord be praised. Hallelujah. Unravel me with the melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears are gone.
Father, this Sunday morning we join the host of heaven to worship you. Can everyone in the auditorium lift up their hands and worship Jesus? If you can just wave them from one side to the other because he's worthy. We join the 24 elders and the four living creatures to say Hosanna to your name because you are worthy. None compares to your majesty, none compares to your power. And this Sunday morning we have come to meet with you. And we know that we will not be the same again. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a believing amen? Amen. Will you please jump those hands together for Jesus and take your seats in God's glorious presence. How many of us are delighted to be in church this Sunday morning? If you're delighted, you want to just give your neighbor a high five um, and tell them, welcome to church this Sunday morning. How many of you enjoyed the hymn and everything that we did this morning? Oh, fantastic. I saw the way everybody was just moving in front, like, oh my goodness, this is heavenly. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I like that video when the brother said that marriage is sweet. I just remember now because I can see him and his wife on that side. And the young man, okay, you're clapping for Jesus. It's a good time to clap. <laughs> and a lot of people call the brother's name. I don't know why you're putting people under pressure. Hey, Amen. Don't call any brother's name. Brother that they call the name, I stand with you. Amen. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. How many of you know that this Sunday service is going to be wonderful? It will be. It will be. We have a phenomenal speaker in the house this Sunday morning. You know, um, today will be my fourth time of listening to him. The first time was probably like 10 years ago where we were still at Spoon Feeders. And he came for a series. Um, I think it was the first service only. Um, where we were at Spoon Feeders. The second time was at a service at... Uh, one of our brothers lost his, his mom. It was a uh, service of songs. And I thought to myself, that, where's this man from? But at the staff meeting on Tuesday that we had, he destroyed our head, arranged it back, and now packaged it and said, you can go forward. Praise God. I mean, he's, he's a thought leader, a business and leadership strategist, a disruptor, a pastor. Glory to Jesus. Harvesters, with Jesus joy in your heart. Will you please make welcome the leader of the Alakunle Shorion Company, Pastor Kunle Shorion. Glory to Jesus. Harvesters, don't stop clapping those hands until it comes forward. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please, you may be seated. Um, I'm going to move so fast. Brevity is a myth in my life. I'm not the guy that says few things. I say a lot of things, right? So, um, handling multiple services is always a program for me. So bear with me. I came here with some products. They are very expensive. No apologies. Um, please find time to check them out at the end of the service. One of them is 25 CDs. It's my biggest work. It's called a Trove Pack. 25 CDs, they'll change your life, addressing everything, business, global thinking, everything uh, is there. So try and check it out. Uh, they will help you. I know you won't bring cash. It's 50,000 naira. So people, nobody brings cash to church on Sunday to buy stuff from a guest speaker, all right? So I brought POS. <laughs> so... All you have to do is swap the card, and the products goes to you, the money comes to us. Um, I also have some CDs here, Seeing the Vistas, um, Understanding Spirit-Led Innovation for Transformation, Seeing the Broadening of Truth, Certainty of Truth, The Pathway, Redefining Doubt, Skepticism, and Authenticity. They all help you, so check them out. Honestly, um, it's always a honor to be out here um, I had a great time at the staff meeting, but more than that, um, I had a great time 10 years ago for one month. We were doing goal setting in church when we were at Spoon Feeders. But this house is just a special place for me. Um, um, this is a city center church. This is a 
city center revolution going on here. And I'm so excited, privileged, blessed to be here every time. Pastor B, Pastor Mo are two amazing people that I love so much. And people have drawn a lot of inspiration from. You know, part of the work they're doing is quite um, um, influencing and culture shaping. It's not every day that you have the opportunity to come around those kind of work. You know, I have a lot of friends in the city, I have a lot of friends in the country who are critically focused about behavioral governance at a level. So to contribute to that work is a privilege. If I'm in Lagos, this would be a good church. I mean, if I spend all my life here, I will not miss anything. I mean, this is just the place to be. So I congratulate you all. Um, I congratulate you all for finding place here. This is not a place to warm the pews. You have to find what you can do. You know, ask what you can do. Be part of the workforce. Solve problems here. You know, a lot is going on here. The last, the next 10 years is going to define a lot of things for the church, for the church as a body of Christ, but most importantly for this house. So get ready, plug in, find what you can do, locate yourself, and communicate your power. All right? It's needed so desperately in this season. God bless you all. Jesus, this is yours. Use it to your glory. Don't challenge us in any way. Just change us, make us better, take us to a new level. Help us to see as we ought. Help us to comprehend as we ought. To us, it has been given to know the mysteries of your kingdom. Kingdom is what we come for today. Thank you for your power. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for change. Clear shift from point A to point B, whatever those points are, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to move very fast. I'm going to read some scriptures. Some I won't bother to read. You know those scriptures already. Um, but this one is a very important scripture for my conversation today. You know the theme. Our theme today is what? What's the theme for this morning? Dominate. Dominate. So um, I'm just going to read Genesis 126. Genesis 126. If you are there, shout hallelujah. I know nobody will say that because that's too fast. Genesis 126. I'm reading, then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the, all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed man, and God said to the man, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. James in chapter 1, verse 4. James in chapter 1, verse 4. The book of James. Holy Spirit, help me today. Time. James chapter 1, verse 4. In fact, I'll just, sorry, James chapter 4, verse 1. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members you lost and do not have, you more than covered and cannot obtain. You fight and war, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask and means that you may spend it on your pleasures. All right? You ask, you do not receive because you ask and means to spend it on your pleasures. Okay? Um, then I want to read very quickly Genesis again in chapter 11. Genesis 11. Holy Spirit. Genesis. Genesis 11 from verse 1. Now the old earth had one language and one speech. Everybody say one language. One, language. one, speech. one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of China and they dwelt there. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. This will be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord God said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language, 
that they may not understand one another's speech. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. I am going to read some other scriptures as we go on. Please just bear with me. Uh, you will know those scriptures, so I just have to stay in them. I came here today with some amazing people. There's a guy called John Obidi. How many of you know John Obidi? Awesome. John Obidi is sitting over about 100,000 people on social media doing a lot of work. But he's also chief, chief executive of our, what, what we are trying to build in the state of Texas in Dallas um, through in the Kenneth Shoring Research and Ideas LLC. So he's here this morning. I just wanted to help me say thank you to him. John is here. He's my partner and my associate in business. We have, um, there's a guy, Enauro, where's Enauro Okai? He's a coach, he's a life coach, he's an emotional intelligence expert, he's here. Let him see you, come on. He's also here with me. Um, Richie, Richie Rich, where's, where, where are you? Uh, yeah, my guys are somewhere, I think they're handling the products, Nifemi, Samora, and some a lot of other people are around here, all right? Um, thank you all for coming and for serving today. Okay, so we live in very complex times. Can I, can I step down, sir? Yeah. We live in very complex times. The times must be understood so that we can position as we ought to. The Bible calls this time perilous. Perilous times. And it has some basic um, definition and experiences that are consistent um, with it. Part of it is that in perilous times, right, um, a man will have to deal with all kinds of contradictions. As a matter of fact, the Bible says a man's enemies will be members of his household. He said the love of men will wax cold. Men are going to become more unthankful, right? Um, un we refuse to be gracious. Um, there will be wars and rumors of wars. People will be haters of good, haters of God. Um, pretty much like darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness the people. The light of God will rise on some, but then there will be a lot of pain and stress in the system. Now, none of these are supposed to shock anybody. A lot of the crisis that you see in the system, a lot of the kidnapping, is just the love of men waxing cold. It's just the people finding it difficult to interpret their reality. Um, because of time, I will not be able to go into the realities of a concept that is going popular post-truth, um, which is the foundation for bigger words like populism, um, and populism, of course, is what created all of the effect of Brexit and Emmanuel Macron and the, the American presidential election. Uh, we are in the borderless world. A lot is happening. Cyber war is dictating the pace of human exchange like never before. Nations are not more powerful anymore just because they have big economies. But smaller nations with the right technological wiring can penetrate some of the most complex worlds in the world today. It's amazing what is going on and how culture is being shaped and how evil is defining its new strength and how the devil is operating in very uncommon ways that a lot of us need to understand. Because of time, I will not be able to break down the, the um, um, journey of evil so that you can understand um, part of why we are sitting where we are sitting. But the devil is a critical part of your experiences, whether you like it or not. You, you have to come to appreciate the ministry of the devil so that you can put him in perspective and take advantage of the purpose that is, is so terribly committed to. Okay? Without the devil today, you and I will not be able to have testimonies. You will not be able to do a lot of things. As a matter of fact, the bigger question should be to ask yourself, why did God not kill the devil in the Garden of Eden? Why didn't he just die after he messed up so that we can move on? Well, if he had been killed in the Garden of Eden after man fell, man will have remained in that state because Christ will have to come because without shedding of blood, there's no redemption. And somebody has to do the dirty job of killing Christ. God doesn't kill. The Bible says uh, he doesn't tempt anyone. He doesn't tempt anyone with evil. And so somebody has to do all of those kind of works. The devil's job is to be able to execute those plans so that God's plans can be executed. What God has done is to uh, make his own agenda into a virus, right, and install it right into the projects of the enemy such that the devil can own it, right, and take responsibility for the outcomes without knowing. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, right? 
So the devil is busy initiating some of the best moves he can ever imagine. One of his best moves, of course, was bringing man down in the Garden of Eden. All right? But his greatest move was putting Jesus on the cross. Okay? But while his greatest move was putting Jesus on the cross, that also happened to be God's biggest move as well, without doing anything. You see, the, the, the devil is so busy executing a lot of things, but there's not one thing he has been able to execute without God taking glory at the end of the day. When the devil is busy in your life, you need to calm down and, and slow down and understand what is going on. The Bible says the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. And when you have understanding about what is going on, the devil becomes a very faithful staff. He becomes a loyal employee who is delivering God's agenda in your life. Because just when he worked so hard and he finished everything, when the devil said, I'm done, God said, I'm done. The devil must have said, but you did nothing. He said, you did everything. And just when you do everything, I'm doing everything at the same time. You will never be able to do anything without ending it up with what I'm doing. That is why all things work together for your good. Not some things, not a few things, not the things you understand. The devil has to be at work because we're in a falling system. Power dynamics dictate that the one who breached the order of peace and the order of power must be on ground to orchestrate and architect the restoration of that power. So when devil initiated evil and created a disequilibrium and a disorder in the global scheme of things and in the agenda of the kingdom, he had to be alive to do the work of restoration. Power dynamics dictate so. Who initiated slave trade? Who ended it? The same white man. Who brought in colonialism? The white man. Who ended it himself? The white man. Who brought in military government into Africa? The military. Who ended it? Military governments in Nagbada. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's just the way it works. Terrorism cannot be defeated by the Americans. It has to be done by the Middle East themselves who initiated it. It's just the way power works. Power works in such a way that those who breach the order of peace must be on ground to work on the restoration to order again. That is why the devil had to be on ground to architect and organize. And every time it's done, God is done. Are you hearing me? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, the inner discipline to understand that and to stay true to that in crisis is where we miss it. Because most of us don't have the clarity to stay in that moment. And so we are unguarded. And in our unguardedness, we make more mistakes. And we create more crisis for ourselves because we don't really understand what is going on. Now, we are talking dominion. We are talking domination. And I'm talking positive world domination. And you have to understand what that means. And if you live in Africa and you are burdened by the socioeconomic disequilibrium and the political disequilibrium, most likely you will be too busy, blinded by the pursuit of your economics. You will miss the passion of your soul to change the world. That is why we celebrate small things like a car, like a shoe, like a house. Some people, their goal in life, the proof that God is working in their life is that they've built a house. Some is that they have a good car or that they have a job, right? A car is not a testimony. A car is a tool of effectiveness. It's your years in poverty that make you come to celebrate a car as a testimony. You don't understand the, the pedigree of your weakness. You don't understand the weight of the nuisance that distracts you such that you are blinded by your need and driven by the disequilibrium in your geography. The devil works differently in Africa with a very form of evil that is very popular but very weak. And you have to understand that a lot of things that you pray about are systemic issues. Systemic issues that people don't pray about. I've asked my pastor friends at times, when you see Bill Gates, if you see Bill Gates today, how do you minister to him? What do you say to him? This is your year. It's not, or what are you going to say? I just want to know. What do you say to Bill Gates? You will make it. You are going to make it. The Lord will prosper you. What are you going to say to Bill Gates? This is the richest man in the world. What are you going to say to Jeff Bezos? How do you inspire those people? You have to be able to draw your theology from a new world, from a different concept. If you come from the economic point of view, you'll be so small in their eyes, they will view you as a weak entity and your God will fall into that bracket as well. And so you have to transcend the smallness of need. You see, when we come to church to share testimonies about cars, about houses, we know what you are celebrating. You are celebrating an escape. 
you have been pummeled by poverty for so long. Poverty, the car that you celebrate, has become a symbol of progress for those who observe you. In your locale, they see those kind of expressions as super superior machines that dictate your superiority. And so what you do is you come to church to say you've bought a car, not because you are celebrating the arrival of a machine that will give you speed, efficiency, and effectiveness. That's not what you are celebrating. You are celebrating because you know this machine that you have acquired represents superiority in the minds of your observers. And so when you rejoice, you are not rejoicing for the efficiency you have acquired, you are rejoicing because you now have a tool that is so superior and makes you different. And the reason why that difference is important is because of how many people don't have it. So it is the lack in the life of those who see you every day that defines the credibility of that testimony. A car is not a testimony. Muslims are buying cars. And they are not robbing. They are not stealing. They don't go to church. They don't do vigil. They don't have angelic support. They don't have prayer of agreement. Nobody's laying hands on them. They don't give. They don't do tithes. They don't do offerings. Nobody's putting anointing oil. They don't have angelic support. They don't do all of the things you do. They don't have the prayer of agreement. They don't have the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit. They don't do word of knowledge, word of prophecy. They don't have all of that. Guess what? They buy that car with superior customer care, market penetration, inner discipline, creative focus. They build systems and structures and they achieve awesome things and they do all of that without the awesomeness of the God that you carry. The Holy Ghost walks inside of you and does nothing. Nothing because what is, you claim he is doing is a weak experience that mainstream culture cannot plug into. Can you go on CNN because you bought a car? You don't need God to buy a car. If it's a car you want, you want a house of your own, God has given you a brain to work that out. Your, the working of your brain is not a carnal exercise. God is the one that put your brain there. If you refuse to use it, you are insulting his creation. Your brain is a God-given instrument. It has to be engaged. It's not different from your eyes. You pray about so many silly stuff. Things that are completely unnecessary. When I say you, I don't mean you in this house. I mean the body of Christ as a whole and our concept about faith and about religion. You see, do you, when you are very hungry, do you pray to God if you should eat? Do you say, Lord, should I eat? No. The hunger is the voice of God right there, telling you to eat. You just go eat straight up. If you mistakenly touch a metal, you touch a metal that is very hot, and you touch it and it's burning your hand, do you say, Lord, should I leave it? It's burning me. Since I must acknowledge you in all my ways so that you can direct my path. Since I must pray uh, without ceasing, Lord, should I drop the metal? You know you wouldn't do that. The moment you touch it, what do you do? You get your hands off. And what do you say after? Ah, thank God. For what? <laughs> you know you heard God clearly. You know God spoke to you very clearly. Take your hands away from death. Because Jesus said, give what is to Caesar to Caesar and give to me only what is mine. I made Caesar. I can't compete with Caesar. Caesar is not my competition. I'm not suffering from low self-esteem. I am above adaptation. You are, you see, 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 see. Most of you think that when you praise God, it can swell God's head. It's an insult into the constancy, the constancy and veracity and universality and sovereignty of your king. Your praises does not swell God's head like it swells your own head. Your praises creates room for your own position in, in his presence. It has nothing to do with his own esteem. If God is capable of adjusting his esteem and ad adapting his emotions, then it's like us. Then it's as weak as us. Then he will not be able to be God over us. So understand that a lot of those things are just small things. Small things that doesn't define who God is. Long life is not a testimony anymore. If long life was the testimony, Jesus was an embarrassment. Because he didn't, do, he didn't do 70 years. He didn't do 100 years. He did 33 years. You tell me what would rather be. I would rather live for 33 years and 2,000 years after, the world cannot find peace except through my name than to live for 1,000 years. Nobody knew that you came, how much more that you left. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the credibility of existence is superior to the longevity of it. It's not how long you live. I've seen whole fools. 
I've seen 17 year old drifters. I've seen 24 year old billionaires. I've seen peace in the life of a 25 year old. And I've seen turmoil and greed and selfishness in the life of a 60 year old. What do you think? It's not how long you're here. Value will not come to you because you came before all of us. Value will come because you effectively deploy your mind in a direction consistently for all your existence. Now let me go into my scriptures. I have 10 minutes more. Are you here? Dominion is not a inheritance of believers. Dominion is a free human gift. You don't need one day of the born again experience to walk in dominion. In Genesis 1.26, the Bible said, come on now. Let us make man in our image. Let him have dominion. The man that they were talking about there is not the man that is born again. Oh, come on now. Am I talking to you? There was no church when that statement was made. That was a statement and a blessing for the man. For the man that was made. That is mankind. That is humanity. Let us make man. That man had eyes, nose, private parts. Had everything that we have. That man is still alive. Whether he's born again or not, that man is alive. Are you, am I talking to you? That man is the men and the women you see all over the world. When the Bible said, let us make man in our image, somebody has to deliver me. I'm, I can explode here. I really need handkerchiefs. You know. Are you here? So, where was I? Somebody help me. Hmm? Dominion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Eight minutes more. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, the man in the Garden of Eden, sorry, the man in Genesis 126 was humanity, not a born again believer. Not a born again believer. He said, Let us make man in our image. Let him have dominion over everything except fellow human beings. But let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over everything. Not his fellow human beings. There's a reason for that, but I'm not going to go into that so that I can move fast. Now, understand this. When man fell, a lot of people said man lost his dominion. Look at the world today. From nanotechnology to electronics. Look at the ways of the telephone. If, if, Pro, if Solomon is going to write the book of Proverbs again, there is a chapter that they will not be able to finish. Because that chapter will, will fill the whole Bible today. When he said, some things are amazing, too wonderful for me. The way of the sheep in the middle of the sea. Uh, if he goes in that direction today, he won't end it. He will say, the way of a telephone in the hand of a man. The way of the TV in a human house. The way of the plane in the air. The way of the automobile on the highways. The way of Bluetooth technology. The way of laser technology. It's not going to end. The way of the microphone, the way of the piano. The guys who made all those things today, the guys in Facebook don't speak in tongues. The guys who created Twitter don't go to church. They don't give tithes, they don't give offerings. You check out the fact that if the people in the world today withdraw their contribution from this service, this church will come down. The microphone will disappear. The aces will disappear. Some of the air of our ladies will disappear as well. <laughs> That's how powerful creation has become. Am I talking to you? All of us will be naked. Because at Tommy Hilfiger and Ralph Lauren, they didn't speak in tongues there. Am I talking to you? We need to be able to make a contribution that is mainstream. Contribution the system can understand. A lot of what you call the devil, oh my God, is nothing but the ignorance of your locale giving you comfort of engagement. 
the strength of a material is in its universal appeal. It's global weight. A microphone cannot be a microphone in Lagos and be a shoe in Germany because it cross border. You can't be tall in Brazil last night and be short in Lagos tomorrow because you travel to the west of Africa. Once you are tall, you are tall in every economy. In rain, in winter, you'll be tall. Am I correct? If you are fat, you are fat in every country, even in Syria. You may be bombed in Syria. You may be a bombed fat person in Syria, but you will not be a bomb chair. Because there is a constant seat to fabrics that gives credibility to his meaning. So when we say this is a wristwatch, it has to be a wristwatch in every country. Everybody in the world must agree it's a wristwatch. It must pass the test of universality, not just the test of locality. If you say you are a millionaire, and you are a millionaire in Naira, but a thousandaire in pounds, you are not a millionaire. You have been fooled by the weakness of your own society that gave you a crown that is so beautiful in the head of a one-eyed king in the land of the blind. And you feel so special, not because you have anything called special, but because of the deposit of ignorance in your locale. And you can have, you can have, you can have amazing red carpets. People can celebrate you locally. And then you get to the other side and you are a nobody. If you want to be a millionaire, don't work one more day. Just take 10,000 naira and run to Zimbabwe. Once you land in Zimbabwe, your 10,000 naira will become about maybe 6 million, maybe 20 million, maybe 100 million or something. You will buy a loaf of bread for $4 million, Zimbabwean. When I went to Zimbabwe, I was giving, I was giving, I, I was giving tips. Tip, five million naira tip. Five million Zimbabwean dollar tips. One million Zimbabwean dollar tip. 500,000 to somebody. I called my home, I said, I've made it. <laughs> I'm giving millions away here. I'm giving millions away per minute. What do you think? Except that, guys, everybody is a millionaire in Zimbabwe. Everybody. Having the figures does not qualify value. If you are a millionaire in Naira and a thousand year in pounds, you are not a billionaire. Whatever is fooling you. At 300 million Naira, you don't have one million dollars yet. But at 300 million Naira, you are a big boy. People will celebrate you in your locale. You drive a Range Rover. You live in a big house. You live by the, at the, by the beach in Lekki. You'll be, so, you'll be so respectable, but you are just you are a no-name person finding comfort in the darkness of your society. When I get to the Murit Alam Mohammed Airport, everybody's greeting me. They're taking selfies. Every time I'm traveling, oh, oh, Pastor, oh, 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 PK, oh, everybody's all around me. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> but let me tell you what I feel more. Once I land at the other side, is the loudest reminder that you are nobody. That means that I've passed the test of locality. I'm failing the test of universality. And so many of your stars, you don't see them in New York. They are no bodies. The people you give a lot of respect to with red carpets, they are walking in Dallas. Nobody, nobody knows that anything is working. Because the standards are different. When I get to the airport here, some. There's no way I can walk into a mall. Somebody will meet me up and say, I listened to your CD. Oh, you were in my church. Oh, you were in our office. Oh, you did this training for us. When I get to the other side, nobody is even there. You are just on your own. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's a different experience. At those kind of times, you don't really feel if you are really wise and you are really visionary. Those are the simple nudgings that tell you there's more. There's more. Instead of dreaming one day, let me buy a car. Why don't you think of the people who own the manufacturing of those cars? One day, Lord, let me fly business class. Somebody owns the entire plane. One day, I will have 500,000 followers. Somebody owns the social media that you are on. I'm going to go watch Arsenal live one day. Somebody owns the club. Can you see how power shifts? And at times, these things are so big. 
too big for you to think is possible for you. So let me break it down. Can I take about five minutes more, Pastor? About five minutes more? Listen, can I have about five minutes more? Can I have two hours more? No, five minutes. Now, this is the thing, guys. Look at this. Look at this. By the time you sit down to ask yourself, what is God seeing? The Bible did not say you are the light of Nigeria. The Bible did not say you are the light of Bagada. You're not the light of some city in Lagos mainland or Lagos Island. You are the light of the world. That means the capacity you carry has a type of radiance that can give illumination to the universe and give comfort and inspiration to the whole world. And he said, let your light so shine that people see not your good prayers, not your good fasting. Those are things I will see as your God. Not, not your good Bible study. Those are things I will see as your God. But the conversion, the proof of your Bible study and your fasting and your prayers is the ideas you spread. Is the products and the services you create for the world to buy into. So if you pray to me a lot and talk to me a lot and nobody is aware that you are on ground, you are winking in the dark. You are doing so much but nobody is aware. Have you met confident ignorance before? You know nothing but you are not aware. So you carry your ignorance with class and swag. You are, you are nothing in the world. Have I helped you? So guys, you need to change the game. And because of time, I need to close it here. Make sure you get the, the tapes in the, in, the, in the second service. But this is it, guys. We are underdogs now. I don't have time to break down the story of Africa. It's almost too late for us to take a position in the global scheme of things. That is why the born-again experience under God is such a critical success factor for us today. So the, 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 the idea that you have God behind you is probably the greatest comfort that you can go mainstream. Because Jesus is Lord said on CNN is far more powerful than Jesus is Lord said in 5,000 churches combined. But CNN will not interview you because you said praise the Lord. They will interview you because of the superior results that you demonstrate. And when they bring you because the media is trained to have the curiosity to question your power. So when you communicate power, they're going to come around you to say, how did you do it? And that's the best time to say Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Jesus is Lord in your, in your, to your friends in church is nothing. Just imagine a soldier who has the best gun, but only uses it in the barracks. That's called friendly fire. He's going to kill all his friends. So all your Bible quoting, all your, all your, all your, all your fasting and prayers and all your powers, they are for the system, not for us. Don't stress us with all your word. The proof of your word has to be felt in Hasselrock. The proof of your fasting and prayers must be felt in Washington. There are power centers in the world. Hollywood is more powerful than all the African shrine combined. The damage value, the nuisance value of Hollywood is far, far more lethal than all the witches and wizards in the world combined. Do you know I eat in my dream at least three times a, a week? <laughs> if you do what I do, you will eat in your dreams a lot. I've been eating my dreams now for over a decade. The food I eat in my dream, God is my witness. I, I've never seen them in the physical before. They don't exist. They are strange food. Strange colors. One day I ate so much, my mouth was like this. When I woke up, somebody would have said, ah, they finished me. My mouth is even moving. I'm dead. But when I wake up, that's not what I say. I thank the Lord. You are too faithful. You feel every. You feed me 24-7. In the physical, in the spirit, you are feeding somebody. You are just feeding everybody. It's what you call it. They came to Adam. They said, name whatever he called them, so they are till today. Every time you have human experiences, you greet it with positivity. Because the elements of the universe are waiting for what you will call it. Once you say, I'm doomed, you are doomed. It's what you call it. 
Even if they put poison in the thing. The Bible says it is sanctified by thanksgiving. When you say, Father, I thank you for the food, the poison becomes sauce. It becomes a spice. It becomes maggie. But once you say, ah, I can't eat somebody again. You know, you're always thinking about all sorts of things. Do you know that I used to have a, an Ossetian and a Doberman? I go to three junctions to feed them every day. You know, what I, you, know what, you know what I picked up there? Rituals. Rituals. They call it Ebo in the West. I used to pick those rituals. The first time I saw, I was living in Bagada. Imen knows that. Imen knows that. Because we used to live in the same house some years ago. And one morning I was jogging and I got to that sea junction and I saw ritual. The richest ever. <laughs> Imen knows that. Imen, you know that. Chicken. Boiled eggs, two two hundred naira notes. <laughs> I was going to walk past, but I said, ah, "This is not. How, we can, we're not now pretending this is not a. This is not value. This is value right here. Fresh." I went there. I put, people were, were looking at me like a ghost. I packed the rituals, man. I went home. I called the dog. The, the dog came out. I served the dog. I was waiting for the dog to go mad. I was ready. <laughs> The dog finished the whole thing. Guess what? Guess how the dog responded? Gratitude. How did I know? I said, grateful dog, grateful dog, grateful dog. Since then, I called my friends. I said, if you know any ritual anywhere, correct rich, don't call me for one coins. If you know any chicken, beef, correct ritual, give me a call. For seven years, I was packing rituals everywhere. The dogs were grateful. My budget on dogs went down by almost 80%. Everything transformed. Guess what? I'm still here. You see the rituals you take your eyes off. I've been packing ritual. I'm the one talking to you. I've been invited you to come and hold his mic. So this, this, hello. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. These things are essentially African. They are. You don't see them in the streets of New York. They are third world stuff. Extremely third world stuff. Oh, amen. <laughs> I was going to come and rest on it. That is the loudest reminder that time is up. Okay, guys, so this is it. I'll give you two keys for your dominion. I've not broken this down enough, but I think I've done enough. Two keys. The first one is this. You can't help yourself. Tap into the spirit of creativity. You see, speaking in tongues is not just an activity that you do just to, as proof that you are filled with the spirit. The Bible said they had one language, one voice, and because of that, nothing could be withheld from them. And then they fell. And God said, scatter their language and give them duplicity and multi-languages. That is why the poorest countries in the world have the highest number of languages. The most prosperous countries in the world have one language. You would think it's a coincidence, but go check it. The poorest countries are dealing with multiple languages. Because when God gave them multiple languages, it was to do two things to them. Limit their imaginative strength and their collaborative prowess. That was their goal. If we break their focus on one language, they will not be able to collaborate and their imagination will be limited. So they will be busy dealing with diversity than being focused. That is why United Nations cannot produce value. Write it down. Because you can't blend diversity at that level. God created diversity of language to limit the activity of man. Now listen. When man fell, some people said he lost dominion. Man did not lose dominion. Go check it. The Bible said, cursed is the ground because of you. Ground is what was cursed, not him. The dominion was still there. It is access, what he can do with that dominion is what was cursed. Oh, I don't have time to break that down. But the dominion never left him. You go to the zoo, you will see the lion taking instruction in the, in the zoo. That's the proof of human dominion over the lion. You will see Python taking instructions from human beings. That is the dominion still in force. The dominion was in force. When man fell, the, what he would do with the dominion now became more stressed. So his, his, his access to value what was, was cursed. 
the capacity to assess that value was still there. Come on now, am I talking to you? So now, when God now cursed man and then took the language away, that became double jeopardy. So now, everything in the scriptures that we lost through the fall of man had been restored in Christ Jesus. But you must ask yourself, what's the restoration for diversity of language? Speaking in tongues, man. Speaking in tongues. When you now speak in tongues, what is happening to you is you are back to that power zone that we were at the Tower of Babel. You are back to that place of one language, one voice. And every time you open your mouth to speak in tongues, you are in a creative zone and a creative moment. Nothing you think about in that zone can be withheld from you. You are back to that place where God said nothing can be taken away from them. So the next time you say, Labushi kaina just know that it's not just a simple exercise. That is your shortcut to the highest value of life. Because of time, I will not be break, able to break that down. But never in your life take speaking in tongues for granted again. Step into it. That is the restoration of Genesis 11. And you are back to whatever it is God took away. So when you speak in tongues, your collaborative strength is back and your imaginative prowess is back in one zone. And every time you do that, ideas will be born. Insights will be born. Products will be born. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what the first thing you need to do is change your goals. It is the responsibility of the human spirit to dream of big projects, big projects, and to trust that heaven will bring it to pass. Even if the research of Harvard are not available for you, if the funding of Hollywood and the funding of Pentagon are not available for you to do what you have to do, trust me, the heaven and its funds are available for you to do what you have to do. But you have to trust and believe. You cannot assess all the capacity in the world anymore, but you have as an underdog the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to release you into the best ideas that can shape culture and influence society. Have I helped you? Yes, so start dreaming of your own social media. Start dreaming of the biggest fashion label in the world. And your dreaming is your beginning. You will never do what God wants you to do. All you need to do is to accept responsibility for what God wants you to do. When you accept responsibility and you allow it to fill your mind, God is now able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above whatever you can think or imagine. But imagination is free. Faith is free. Optimism is free. You don't need a dime to accept that you can change the world. But you have a God in your life who will do the change. At your best, you plant your water. The increase is in the hand of God. Yes. Your responsibility is not to advance your destiny. Don't believe motivational speakers who tell you that you must pursue your dreams. In Christ Jesus, you don't pursue dreams. You position for them. When you position for your dreams, is access, relationship, working, talking, relationship with the Holy Ghost. Your positioning is the guarantee of your transformation. This is how it works. This is how it grows. This is how it happens. And once you do that, you find incredible capacity for change. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I trust with everybody in this room today. I trust for new insight. I trust for wisdom. I trust for understanding. I put a demand on the grace of God upon this house. I put a demand upon the grace of God upon Pastor B and Pastor Mo. And I join my faith and I trust and I release everyone here to a mouth and a wisdom which none of your opponents and adversaries can gain, say, or resist. In the name of Jesus. A mouth and a wisdom which none of your opponents can gain, say, or resist. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Rise to your feet, everybody. Begin to pray in the spirit. Receive it. A mouth and a wisdom which your opponents cannot gain, say, or resist. In the name of Jesus, come on now. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Can I hear a believing amen? Amen. amen. You may please be seated. Were you blessed today? Yeah, I told you before we started, you thought I was just talking, right? Yeah, you have to learn to trust me. Praise God. And Pastor Kunle Sharon will be speaking in the second service as well. You need to tell your friends that are still at home, oh boy, you got to wake up. <laughs> you, have, you have to wake up. You have to let them know that they need to be here. Uh, amazing, amazing teaching. 
Um, and I prophesy to use your time to dominate in the mighty name of Jesus. Mind blowing ideas, mind blowing revolutionary thoughts, disruptive ideas, they come to you in the mighty name of Jesus and receive the grace and the courage to do them. Amen. Many people write, many people have good ideas and great thoughts, but very few people implement them. Be those that implement. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we invite, I want to invite forward um, Brother Soji Peter. He's the head of our maturity team here. Um, he's going to share with us a little bit before um, we give our tithe and our offerings this Sunday morning. Can we just appreciate him as he comes forward? Okay, sir. Praise the Lord. I know we have learned something very phenomenal this morning. Something very destructive in our thinking. But there's a part that you and I also have to play to connect all of this together. Praise God. Scriptures make us understand that every good and perfect feat come from above. And so when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you need to connect the ideas with the ability to do. That's why scripture says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8 and verse 18, that it's the Lord that do it, that gives us all the power, the ability to express those ideas. Then it will produce wealth. It's not only for you to be able to conceptualize the ability to, 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 to break it down, the ability to, 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 to execute comes from God. Because if he gives you the ideas, only him is able to give you the ability and the, and, and, and the comprehension to break down those ideas. Praise God. This morning I'm here to talk about some, little, some projects that the church is embarking on. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's not news to us anymore. We are trying to get a new generator. We are trying to buy more ACs because the weather is getting hot and we need to keep this place conducive for all of us as a family. And, you know, many of us have, have pledged towards this. Some of us are, are yet to redeem our pledges. Some of us are yet to even hear about it. So I'm just here to just encourage us this morning. Whenever there is a need in the house of God, I need you to understand that it's a time for increase. And it's so timely because of the kind of world that is coming to us right now. It's so timely. Praise God. That scripture is in Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says, it's the, it's, the, it's the Lord that gives us power. He said, remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that, that giveth power to get well. That giveth the power to get well. That he may what? Establish the covenant which is sworn to your father. That covenant which is sworn in the beginning. That man should dominate. Praise God. It is the Lord that giveth the power to get well. And you know, if you read in the scriptures, in, in the book of Genesis, scripture says, and, and, and Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God, in Genesis chapter 6. And then the Lord made him to walk in righteousness. Through Noah, God created the first righteousness on this earth. God saved the world through Noah. And how did he do it? Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. How did he do it? Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. You know, if you read that to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, you will say, it is he that gave you the power to get to it. So the question now is, how? The how is in this verse. It says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. The power, the, the, the way to connect the idea and the execution is through your seed power. It's called seed power. And whenever there is a need in the house of God, it's a time for lifting. I'm a typical example of that, I can tell you. Please give me um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 8. I just want to show us something. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound unto you, that ye, always having sufficiency of all things, may abound unto every good one. Verse 9. It says, and it is written, he had despaired abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. Verse, verse 10. It says, now, he that minister what? Seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and do what? Multiply your seed sown. The multiplication of a seed that has not gone into the ground cannot happen. It's only a seed that has gone to the ground that there can be multiplication. It says you will multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. I remember in 2018 Wine Press, Pastor Balaji called me and said, okay, I'm going to set up a team, and I want you guys to change this paving stone outside. And so we just came together. Uh, there's a couple. Yeah, she's in the choir. She, she's part of it. I know you have a testimony from that, right? Praise God. You know, there's a couple and, a, and one, of my, one of my leaders in my team. And then one, two, other, two other men joined us. 
People of God, you know what happened after that? It was January, and I just finished paying my house rent in December. And I had a lot of stuff that I was doing at that point, January school fees and all of that. But I struggled, and I just made it happen. Myself and that team, we made it happen. And in, before March of that year, I, uh, Pastor Balaji had already given us an instruction that we should write whatever we want to earn on the check. Praise God. So I wrote eight digits. I'm telling you the truth. I wrote eight digits. Before March of that year, I heard an instruction while I was praying that you have stepped into that thing. What is that? Please put, keep that verse 10 on the, on the screen. I want to explain some things with that verse 10. It says, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Your seed does not only bring you many money, it brings increase to your righteousness. I, be, I began to hear the, the, the word of God clearly with dates. Clearly with dates. I heard that you have stepped into this. By the time I got into May, I had made it. That thing I wrote on my check, I made that one transaction, or not two, not three. One transaction, I had made that figure I wrote on my check by the month of May. I fast forward again to this year's wine press. And after that wine press, I, I had a team with my I had a meeting with my team members, and we agreed that we're always going to support the church, you know, by giving to support wine press because wine press is always a big budget, people of God. Always a big budget. We just come here and have spiritual experiences. You don't want to know how much goes into wine press. So we did that giving. I remember giving a check to Pastor Dyer. And, and some nights after that, I was praying. I heard March 7th, you will step into a particular realm. I don't, want to, I don't want to begin to mention figures. People of God, by the first week of April, I had made what I was going to earn for nine years of my salary from one transaction. Nine years, I'm telling you, nine years. Annual package. I didn't say monthly package. Nine years annual package. And if you know me very well, I don't earn very fully. Praise God. Nine years. From what? An instruction of giving. Why am I telling you this? I decided to tell you my own personal testimony. Why? Because there is, it is the seed power that produces that harvest that we desire. And it's not only money that it gives you. It gives you increase. It increases your righteousness. If you want to be more spiritual, you can connect with it. I told you earlier, I began to hear instructions with dates. It has never, I only heard it from Bishop Edeko. That on the 15th of this, the Lord told me, that's why that's the only person I know that gives his, his instructions with dates. People of God, I began to hear instructions with dates. Before I begin to pray, things happen. So I just want to encourage us, for those of us that are here to redeem our flesh, for those of us that are here to tap into it, see, to get global domination, even though the idea has come, you need to step out. Even though the idea has come, you need people to help you. So I want you to understand that you can connect those missing links even with your giving today. You can increase your righteousness even with your giving today. So if you have not, if you have not made a pledge before, please, I want you to rise up towards the generator, towards the, 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 the ACs. I want you to, we have cards from, from your shops, please. Can we just give them cards? If, I've not, if you have not given, you've not pledged towards this, can you just, with a, with a, with a, with a, show of, with a wave of a hand, can you, just, can you just signify with a wave of a hand and they will, place, they will place a pledge card in front of you. Praise God. Please, people are lifting up their hands. Please, ushers, people, if you, have not, if you have not made that pledge, and for those of us that have made that pledge, I need you to step out in faith and redeem it. Myself and my team, we pledged three ACs, and we have started to redeem. In fact, we have redeemed one already. Praise God. The, for the, for the few, few people that have even redeemed their pledge, if you look out, you see that we have made an installment on the generator that has been delivered. So the truth is, if there's an opportunity, it is for your lifting. That's the truth. Whether you give or not, the gospel will move. But it is to your own advantage if you do. It is to your own advantage. He says the cattle upon the thousand hills, they are mine. So this morning, let in our, in, our, in, our, in our usual tradition, if you are giving your tithes and your offering, can you just step up? We're going to, we're going to pray over our tithes and our offering this morning. If you, are, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you are giving your tithes, please stand on your feet as our custom is. And let's just give to God with understanding. Let's give with God in faith in our hearts and our lives will never remain the same. And if you are yet to do that, please can you package your offering? The details, the bank details are on the screen. If you're going to make a transfer from anywhere in the world, please let's just make a transfer onto those details. Be careful to look at the details very well. Let's package our tithes and our offering even as we give unto the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. 
Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give. You are the one that gives good gifts unto men. Lord, we have come to honor you this morning with our seeds. In faith and in understanding that only you are the one that rewards every good work. Lord, we ask that you accept it as a speed selling servo in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that everyone that wants to give, but they do not have, Lord, there will be supernatural provision in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone that is giving in faith and in hope, that you will meet them at the very point of their needs in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus, much less a powerful name we are praying. Let's celebrate Jesus, church. While we're doing that, if today happens to be your first time to be here, will you please signify by lifting up your right hand you are here for the very first time at Harvesters International Christian Center. Can you lift your right hand? Thank you, my, my, oh, my brother. I'm delighted to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Can you lift your hand on his behalf uh, so that, it's, okay, you can lift it so that we can get a cut across. And we have a present for everyone that is here for the first time. Anybody else you are here for the first time? Can we just appreciate them in a special way? One, two, go. You're welcome. Yay! Glory to Jesus. Can we jump on our feet? We want to dance. We want to celebrate Jesus as we bring the service to a close. To Olubala, Obala, no baloney, but you feel like you're in the pep. Big Billy Kioro, Alade, no assassin. Money, money, big money, I'm not to toy, I get in general.
speaking in the second but also on Tuesday at Hepta so you want to make sure you are here on Tuesday for Hepta uh, Hepta has been has been a blessing right yeah HSTC also started yesterday how many of you were at HSTC yesterday how was it it was, it was marvelous I was I was very pleased to be there I, I taught the hundred level class it was amazing uh, so you need to make sure that you're at HSDC if you missed last week we're going to give you that grace to come this Saturday we start at 7 a.m. And of course, Hepta on Tuesday. Remember to fast, remember to pray before you come for Hepta. Say to your neighbor, say neighbor, God's goodness and all of his mercies, they follow you all the days of your life. And you, yes you, you are God's dwelling house today, tomorrow, and forever. Say to your neighbor, say neighbor, remain blessed, focused, and unstoppable. Make sure you are in the cell meeting this evening.